This time, yes, everybody can be seated, except for Sarah and family, come on up for a baptism. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Lord commanded baptism, saying to His disciples in the last chapter of Matthew, All authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I will be with you always, to the very end of the age. The holy apostles of the Lord have written, This promise is for you and your children, and baptism now saves you. We also learn from the Word of God that we are all conceived and born sinful and are in need of forgiveness. We would be lost forever unless delivered from sin, death, and everlasting condemnation. But the Father of all mercy and grace has sent His Son, Jesus Christ, who atoned for the sin of the world, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Sarah, receive the sign of the cross upon your forehead and upon your wrist, to mark you as one redeemed by Christ Jesus. Hear the word of our Savior, Jesus Christ, telling the new birth by water and the Spirit. I tell you the truth, unless a man is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Flesh gives birth to flesh. But the Spirit gives birth to the Spirit. This is the Gospel. And then, sponsors, family, parents, everybody, it is your, it is your challenge here to be an encouragement to Sarah and her faith. To continue to help her, to continue to pray for her, continue to encourage her to study the Bible, uh, and, and I'm supposed to put in there when they're little to help them do confirmation. Well, check. <laughs> Done. But that's just the beginning. That's just the beginning in terms of continuing to be uh, uh, encouraged in her faith. Continue to help her to be taking the sacrament and growing and kind of guiding, guiding her with God's Word. If this you intend gladly and willing to do, say yes. God enable you to both will and to do this faithful, loving work with His grace fulfilled what we're unable to do. In order to implore the blessing of our Lord Jesus Christ upon the gathering uh, of this child into the family of our Father, let us with all the family pray the prayer He gave us. Let's all join together in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven,
confession of faith together today. So, uh, we're going to do this all together. So if you two will stand down here, you three will come up and join them. And the congregation can join us. Just come on down here. Everybody line up down there, face me. And this is... Do you have bulletins? Grab them. <laughs> Grab your bulletins so you can follow along and participate. And go to, see where I have the Lord's Prayer and the Confession of Faith for Baptism. This is part of your confession here today. This is what we're confirming in you, this confession. So you are, I'm going to ask you, you're telling me what you believe. And I'll ask the congregation to join in and follow along with us because it is also a corporate, a congregational confession. Do you believe in God the Father Almighty? Yes. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son? Let's pray. Almighty and merciful God and Father, we thank and praise you that you graciously preserve and enlarge your family and have granted Sarah the new birth in holy baptism and made her a member of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and an heir of your heavenly kingdom. We humbly implore you that as she has now become your child, you would keep her in her baptismal grace that according to all your good pleasure, she may faithfully grow to lead a godly life to the praise and honor of your holy name. And finally, with all your saints, obtain the promised inheritance in heaven through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let's see. Then, if the congregation will join me in the blessing and welcome. Sarah into the family. Through baptism, God has added Sarah to his own people to declare the wonderful deeds of our Savior, who has called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. We welcome you to the Lord's family. We receive you as a fellow member of the body of Christ, a child of the same Heavenly Father, who work with us in his kingdom. We will pray for you. And you, Sarah, the Lord bless and keep you in all your ways from this time forth and forevermore.
I invite the children to come up for the children's message. and peace to you in the name of our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus. 
Well, this is the point where y'all usually snooze off, probably. I'm going to pay a little more attention today, I think, because it's all about Jesus. You thought I was going to say about you, but it's actually all about Jesus and His wonderful work in your life. It started, as we talked about, with baptism, right? Go ye therefore make disciples of all nations. Y'all are disciples, right? What's a disciple? Kiki. They didn't know I was going to ask him a question. Anybody, what's a disciple? What's a disciple of Jesus? Exactly, a follower of Jesus. You just this. A follower of Jesus. You are all followers of Jesus, right? You are his disciples. And then you follow. Go ye therefore and make disciples, followers of Jesus, of all nations. You fall into that category, all nations. Baptizing them. And you're going to share with us, uh, I think for most of you, uh, put your baptism dates in there. Sarah, yours is easy today. <laughs> Baptizing them. You've been baptized. Teaching them all things whatsoever I have commanded you. We've tried to teach you a lot. I don't know how much you've learned, but I'll be honest with you. When I was in your shoes... I went through, you guys had it so easy. You'll hear this from all the old people. You're going to hear it from me. I spent two years every Saturday morning from 8.45 to 11 o'clock through the school year with the minister doing confirmation. Okay? Y'all haven't had to do that much, have you? You've had to spend some time learning them. You have been in Sunday school for a couple of years now, some of you. And actually years far beyond that. All those, those Sunday school classes that you sat in were part of this. Uh, the, the time that you sat in class with Justin over here is part of this. Okay? Uh, time that you've sat with me. All of it to help you learn about this faith that you're being baptized into. And, and it is a journey that is just, just getting going for you. We treat it kind of like graduation. You get these cool robes, you get gifts, you get all this kind of fun stuff. And a lot of people think it being confirmation being graduation, but it's not a graduation. Okay? It is a celebration. And, and we are confirming the faith that you have. Actually, you're confirming this faith today. This is where you today stand up and say, this is what I believe. We don't do that with you when you're little, although when you're little, you still have faith and you believe, right? Did any of you remember when you first kind of believed in Jesus? I don't think you can. Because I think you, first of all, you had faith at what point? When you're baptized, right? When you're baptized, you become part of his family. And when you're a little older and you're baptized, it's different because you know what you're being baptized for and what it's about. When you're little, when you're about two months old, can you articulate very well, oh, I just become part of God's family. I know Jesus. You, know, you can't articulate that very well at that point. Is he there? Absolutely. Was he in your hearts? Absolutely. But when you started going to Sunday school, you started learning what that's about. And when you start going to confirmation, you're putting this, this stuff together called theology. Who Jesus is, who the Father is, who the Holy Spirit is. And now today we're confirming that. So confirmation, confirm. Confirming your faith, your confession. Okay? A confession... Like Eliana, part of your confession is what you believe in, right? You believe in Jesus? Absolutely. You believe He's your Savior? That's part of your confession. Uh, let's see. Thomas, you believe in the Trinity? That there's Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? There's three of those? But one God? That's part of your confession. Okay? You shared that today. Uh, Nikki. Part of a little bit ago, we confessed that Jesus was born in a manger, that he was born, he grew up, he suffered, he died, he came back to life. 
You believe that, right? That's part of your confession. We're sharing that today publicly. Sarah, same thing. You've learned about the Holy Spirit, that He's at work, that He works through His Word, and He's involved in baptism and communion, right? Part of your confession. So that's what we're confirming today, is this is who God is, this is your confession. And I picked this, this Hebrews text in specific today, because at the end of this it says, let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he is promised is faithful. So the challenge is holding on to this confession. Alright? I want you to think of yourself as in a tug of war. Alright? Okay? How do you how do you think you do in a tug of war? Well, it depends on who you're doing tug of war with, right? Let's say it's you on one end of the rope and Satan on the other. One on one. How do you think you do? Would you prefer to have someone helping you on your side of the rope? I would. None of us do too well if he's on one end and we're on the other by ourselves. Right? I mean, we're going to hold on to our confession. We're going to hold on. This is my faith. This is what I believe. But is it easy to let go? I don't think it's easy to let go. I think you work. You, you struggle at it. You want to maintain that faith. And you work at it a while, but it's, it's, it's easy sometimes to just get a little tired and loosen up on the rope. When we loosen up on the rope, who's still pulling? Satan is. The world is. All those things out there that want to pull us in with them, they're going to continue to pull. They never let off. See, we get tired. You know? You know, it's... It's, it's really late. I don't feel like reading my Bible now. It's, oh, I, I need a little more sleep. I don't feel like reading my Bible now. i got all my friends to go out with tonight. Probably not going to make it to church tomorrow. Uh, oh, I'm out on my own now. I really don't need to go to church. Uh, I'll be okay. I believe in Jesus. You feel the rope slipping? That's how that rope slips. You know help, who helps us hold on to the rope? Jesus does. The very beginning of this passage it says, Therefore, brothers, since we have confidence to enter the holy places. In other words, our confidence, we need confidence, right? But if your confidence is in you to hold on to that rope, you're in trouble. Because you're not going to be able to hold on. Who does our confidence need to be in? You've answered this question since you were little in children's messages. It's the same answer. But what is the answer? Who is your confidence in? Thomas. Who's your confidence in? The Lord Christ. Exactly. That's where our confidence is. Because we all let go. Our strength is never going to be our own. Our strength is always going to be in Jesus. He is your confidence. Walk away with nothing else today. Remember, your confidence, your strength is always going to be in Jesus. He's the one that's going to hold on to the rope for you. He is those big, huge arms that come around you and hold on and does not let go. Now, you can let go and walk off. But usually by God's grace, He wonderfully grabs you and says, Come back over here, we got a rope. He does it with you. And he walks with you. And that's where your confidence is. Your confession that you have confidence in is who Jesus is. And that's what we testify to today. Another reason I, I brought this passage up, I like it because of the, the last verse here. And let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works. Not by neglecting to meet together as a habit of some, but encouraging one another as you see the day drawing near. In other words, these people around you are your encouragement. These people around you are the ones that are going to encourage.
encourage you in your faith. They're the ones that are going to hopefully say, hey, I missed you last Sunday. Or how are you doing? Or what's going on in your life? Is there anything I can pray for for you? That's what this church family is about. And that's what we are to do with one another, to be an encouragement to one another, an encouragement in the faith, to be Jesus for one another. Well, I'm going to have you come join me up here, and we are going to do some uh, questions and answers. And y'all will need to share a little bit. So if you will, come on up here. Move my stuff out of the way. Y'all just pile around up here. Everybody just come on up. And let me. There's a couple microphones. Y'all can grab those. And we're going to quiz you on some questions here with your faith. Okay. Actually, I might be better. I was on this image. That way everybody can kind of see y'all. Okay, let's just we'll just go down the line here. Kiki, tell me, what all did God do to save you? Mom, God sent his own son to die on the cross for us sinners. I was a baby when my family brought me to church for about two months until I was baptized on December 4th, 2005. From that point on, the Holy Spirit has been with me, and I have gone to church, Sunday school, and now confirmation. It says in Matthew 19, 14, that Jesus said, Let the little children come to me, and do not hinder them, for such, for to such belongs the kingdom of heaven. All right, Thomas, share with us the same thing, what God did to save you. I was baptized at First Lutheran, September 24th of 2006, when I was about four months old. That is when God brought me into his family. For God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son. Whoever believes in him shall not perish, but live eternal life. Only on same thing. What did God do to save you? My family introduced me to church and to God. I came to him as a baby through baptism on February 16, 2006. I was almost a month old. I didn't understand at the time, but came to learn that God sent his only son to die on the cross for our sins. John 3:16. For God who loved, God, for God who loved the world, that He gave His one and only Son, that whoever believes in Him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Matthew 19:14. Jesus said, "Let the little children come to Me, and do not hinder them." For the kingdom of heaven belongs to such as these. Alright, Nikki, what did God do to save you? God saved me by taking away my sins when I was baptized on September 17, 2006, when I was just over a month old. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. John 3.16. And Sarah, same thing. What did God do to save you? God sent Jesus to die on the cross because he loved the world so much. After God in charge with Nikki, I decided I'd like to continue going. I'm glad that today I'm celebrating baptism and confirmation. First John 1 7 says the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. And John 1 29 says the next day he saw Jesus coming towards him and said, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Y'all probably didn't catch this. But I did because I saw the dates. Thomas and Nikki baptized a week apart. So one was one week, one the next. Let's see. Let's go on here. Uh, what does it mean to be a Christian? Being a Christian to me means being a follower of Christ the Lord. Jesus Christ is the world's only Savior and Redeemer, the way and the truth and the life. Life. If I ever feel down, I go to God by praying. I do the same if I am pro having problems with other people. It affects how I view death and that I am not afraid to die since I know He has saved me and I will have eternal life. Thomas, what does it mean to be a Christian? Hold the microphone closer up. I'll hear you better. 
blessings we receive through Holy Communion. The blessing of Jesus' body and blood. Now it's not here. The blessing of Jesus' body and blood through the bread of the wine and the wine. Elion, what blessings do you receive through communion? During the Holy Communion, I will receive the body and blood of Jesus Christ, and through his body and blood, he will forgive my sins. The book of John chapter 6 refers to Jesus' body represented by the bread and his blood being the wine. John 6.33 For the bread of God is the bread that comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. John 6.35 And Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall never hunger, and who believes in me shall never thirst. John 6, 53-54 Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life. And I will rise, raise them at the last. Nikki, what blessings will you receive through the game? The main thing I will receive is forgiveness of sins, but I will also get the assurance of being in heaven when I die. For Christ suffered once for sins and righteous for the unrighteous, that he might bring God, being put to death, and flesh made alive in the Spirit. 1 Peter 3.18 and Sarah, what blessing will you receive through communion? Being united closely to Christ and receiving forgiveness for all I have done that is wrong. In Matthew 20, 26, 28, Jesus said, This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for, many for the forgiveness of sins. All right. Last question for you all. What things do you plan to do as time goes by in the future to help build up your faith? In the future, I will build up my faith by having a personal relationship with God, meaning I will turn to Him whenever I am sad, happy, or anxious. I will also build up my faith by continuing to go to church after I am out on my own. Thomas, what things will you do to help build up your faith? I will continue to attend church and learn more about Jesus. I also plan to continue to attend different activities at church. And Leon. What are you going to do to help build up your faith as time goes by? I will continue following the Word of God by attending Bible school and church service. I will introduce Jesus Christ to anyone who has not accepted Him into their hearts. I will raise my children in, ch in Christian household and have them baptized. I will continue to walk in the path that the Lord has planned for me. Nikki, what things will you do to help build up your faith? I plan to continue to go to church and study the Bible. Okay, Sarah, what things will you do? Continue to do the right thing and go to church. I will spend more time in the Bible and in prayer. All right. Well, thank you all very much for sharing with us your faith, what you believe about it, what you believe in Jesus, and, and making these public statements. We will continue to encourage you and try to be a blessing for you. We pray for you, continue to encourage you, encourage you in God's word and help you to grow in this faith that you have. Well, let's go through the rite of confirmation. If you will all line up down below there for me. Actually, I tell you what, if you want to just let's lay your sheets up here. You won't need them. And if y'all will come down here and just line up in front of me. So, down there. <laughs> we didn't practice this, <laughs> obviously. All right. I'm going to go through the rite of confirmation here. Beloved in the Lord. Our Lord Jesus Christ said to his apostles, All authority has been given to me in heaven.
heaven and on earth. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. You have been baptized, you have been catechized in the Christian faith, according to our Lord's bidding. Jesus said, Whoever confesses me before men, I will confess before my Father, who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, I will also deny before my Father, who is in heaven. Lift up your hearts, therefore, to the God of all grace, and joyfully give answer to what I now ask you in the name of the Lord. So I'll ask you a question, I'll give you essentially how to respond. This is your public confession. Pretty cool stuff. Do you, this day, in the presence of God in this congregation, acknowledge the gifts that God gave you in your baptism? If so, answer, yes, I do. Do you renounce the devil? If so, yes, I renounce him. So you all say, yes, I renounce him. Do you renounce his all his works? So, yes, I renounce them. Catch it all. Do you renounce all his ways? Yes. Very good. The next part is that we did together a little while ago was the Confession of Faith, the Apostles' Creed. And the reason we use that, we share that as a congregation, that is a statement of our faith. And, and we've gone through that. Do you believe in God the Father Almighty? Yes. And we, you shared that with me. Do you believe in Jesus Christ as the only Son of our Lord? Yes, and you shared that statement of faith. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? Yes, you shared that. Now, do you hold all the prophetic and apostolic scriptures, in other words, the Bible, cover to cover, to be the Word of God? If so, answer yes. Do you confess the, the teachings of the Lutheran Church as you've learned them through the Bible, and through your catechism to be faithful and true. If so, answer yes. Do you intend to hear the Word of God and receive the Lord's Supper faithfully? If so, answer I do by the grace of God. Do you intend to live according to the Word of God and in faith, word, and deed to be, remain true to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, even to death? If so, answer, I do by the grace of God. And notice it's by the grace of God, because without God's grace, are you going to make it? No, nor would I. Let's see. Uh, and then, do you intend to continue steadfast in this confession in church and to suffer all, even death, rather than fall away from it? So answer, I do by the grace of God. We rejoice with thankful hearts that you have been baptized and received the teaching of the Lord. You have confessed the faith and been absolved of your sins. As you continue to hear the Lord's word and receive his blessed sacrament, he who has begun a good work in you will bring it to completion in the day of Jesus Christ. This time, uh, let's do this. If y'all will take about a, a, about one or two steps back, right about there. That one. Okay. And then,
is your confirmation verse is from Joshua 1 9. I have not have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened. Do not be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. The Lord bless you. Here's you. You can rise. And then Thomas. You can kneel here. Thomas Garner. The Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Who has given you the new birth of water and the Spirit, and has given you all your, and has forgiven all your sins, strengthen you with His grace to life everlasting. Amen. Thomas, your verse is from John 3:16. For God so loved the world that He gave His only Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. I can do all things to him who strengthens me. The Almighty God, our Father, Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you new birth and of the Spirit, has given you, forgiven you all your sins, strengthened you with his grace to life everlasting. Amen. Thank you. Nicole Platter. The Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you new birth of water and of the Spirit, and has forgiven you all your sins, strengthen you with His grace to life everlasting. Amen. And Nikki, your verse is also John 3.16. For God so loved the world that He gave His only Son, that whoever believes in Him shall not perish but have everlasting. given you new birth of, of water and of the Spirit, and has forgiven you all your sins, strengthen you with His grace to life everlasting. Amen. Sarah, your verse is from Psalm 27.1. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Please rise for prayer. Lord God, our Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you for your great goodness in bringing these, your sons and daughters, to the knowledge of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and enabling them both with heart to believe and with mouth to confess his saving name. Grant that, bringing forth the fruits of faith, they may continue steadfast and victorious to the day when all who have fought the good fight of faith shall receive the crown of righteousness. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you and keep you on this journey that is just getting started.